All right, Mike Gilbert is joining me, the host of Brace for Impact, the podcast on the Fight Game Media Network. Mike, you were on uh, Josh Nason's show not too long ago, so you are familiar with the uh, the F4W Empire, obviously, as uh, mm -hmm. someone who's uh, who, who's been a subscriber for a while. But uh, first time, I think, joining this show, but I've had JD on to help me out uh, a couple times when I needed a, a co-host. So welcome. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks. I, you know, I've been on with you before when, before you uh, joined uh, the F4W network back on right. your old network. Right. Um, and then I think not this, this year, but the previous year, uh, JD and I both joined you um, right after bound for glory, I think in 2021. So that would have been the last time that I've been on with you on this network. We actually live on YouTube. Um, JD and I came on with uh, you and John LaRocca. That's so. right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No, no, no. Good. That, that's good. Cause uh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me about that. I, I, I know I wanted to do it again as we got closer to the end of the year because impact doesn't get a lot, <laughs> whole lot of coverage on this network anymore. You can remember, you've been a fan for, for a mm -hmm. while with, uh, with this website, but some of the best audio was Brian and Dave reviewing TNA <laughs> like back in the day. <laughs> yeah, those those are always fun shows. Um, I love the fact that it was making Brian absolutely miserable a lot of the time. Um, and so and probably right now they don't they don't review it a because it's not, a you know, not many people watch the show. Right. So yeah. it doesn't get a ton of coverage. And and I don't think that uh, a ton of the subscribers to the network are actually watching the show. Um but people still do watch it as proof by the numbers that we do on your network. I, I yeah. you know, we're, we're right at the top uh, uh, of every, every show. We're usually like, you know, we're right up there with all the other review shows that are on, the, on your network. And so our numbers do pretty well. So there, there is still an audience out there as it's small, but it's, it's a, a hardcore audience and they will support anybody that's willing to talk about impact. Um, and unless of course you're just dogging it all the time, which, <laughs> which JD and I do criticize it. But, <laughs> It's it's what we criticize it, but we still give it its dignity, right? I think a lot of times when some of the bigger websites or the bigger media pundits are, are criticizing impact, they talk about it like it doesn't matter because yeah. it's a, it's low viewed, and I still give it its dignity because it does it does matter. Like the wrestling matches are still important matches, even if a lot of people are watching them because the talent are still giving it their all, and the people that are watching it are very much into it. So I still think it deserves a little bit of dignity when you're talking about it, even as you're critiquing it, which JD and I do, and we still make fun of it. Don't get me wrong. Like our, <laughs> our like 90% of our, our show is just us either making fun of impact or making fun of each other, but we still like the show that we're talking about. And you can really tell that when we do our show. So that's actually a good place to start because in doing the podcast that you guys do, there is a chemistry. There is a, uh, a back and forth, a rhythm that you guys have, which makes the show so entertaining. And, you know, John and I have been doing a show for forever now. And I feel like right now we are in the best sweet spot we've ever been with sort of setting each other up and knowing what the other person is going to say and just being that 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 in 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 tune with each other. And that's also something that you and JD do very well now. Uh, the evolution of, of your podcast, uh, originally, uh, we tried to do some different things with the audio, but then we brought the video component into it. And now you guys pretty much do every show on video. So that brings a different dynamic in that you can kind of see the person and what they're going to say and when they're ready to, to, to talk. And that I think that helps in, in the chemistry of the show. But like, why do you think a you guys are still so interested in, in doing a podcast about impact and, and also be like, could you do the same show on like an entirely different topic? Like let's say new Japan pro wrestling where you can't really make fun of the wrestling because the wrestling is really good and, and they don't do the, the, the zany stuff. Well, so they do some of the zany stuff, but like, yeah. do you, do you think it is somewhat the, the topic that also helps you guys with the chemistry piece? Uh, you know, I think the topic helps, but I, I think with just with JD and I, because we, we, we were very similar, even though we do have some differences and we, we actually like to celebrate our differences, which is, I think is important. We like to make fun of each other's differences and our, our little intricacies of, of our, of our various personalities. Like he's a, 
he is a successful wrestler, um, amateur wrestler that actually wrestled in college and is a wrestling coach and um, and is a novelist and and has not only read a lot of books, but has written a lot of books. And me personally, I sucked as a wrestler in high school. <laughs> I've never written a book and I've maybe read less than 10 books in my entire life. <laughs> but we do have a little bit of differences between each other. But I think that any topic that you give us, we, we could probably go out there and talk about it just because we do get along so well. And impact isn't the only show that we watch that's the show that we cover yeah. but when we get into our our patreon show because patreon we try to keep it um news centric there isn't a lot of impact news all the time right so then we, we start to dive into other topics and we can riff on just about anything um so i think any show that you give us we could have a good time watching it, a good time talking about it impact and impact is is kind of zany and stuff like that so that does help but uh you know you're at could we do a new Japan show? Uh, absolutely. We could probably do a new Japan show. Uh, we've actually covered AEW a lot on our podcast and yep. we've, and we've, and AEW, there's a lot to make fun of there. There's a lot of things <laughs> to dig into. Um, even though it is, you know, a, uh, a more well put together show and it is a, a better book show that impact a lot of times. And they have, obviously they have a lot of big stars and yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, we, we could absolutely do a good AEW show, but I think the, the reason why we stick with impact is because nobody else is doing an impact show. Like Fightful just started theirs. Um, the, the Observer kind of stopped covering it years ago, and that was one of the reasons why I had an idea to actually do it. Um, and so n there's not really that many people out there doing an impact show, but everybody does an AEW show. And by the time they're by the time they're done listening to to uh, to Dave and Brian, uh, Brian on Wrestling Observer Live, uh, Matt Men fight game podcast like hmm. by the time like you know, by the time they get down to our level get down to our show it's like they've already heard a thousand different reviews so we bring something different to the table and we we bring um a a fun dynamic to the wrestling podcast space and uh we're really a couple of meathead jocks just talking wrestling um and that's kind of that's kind of what we like about it and even if you're not a fan of impact you can you can still listen to our show and still like the show because we'll if, if you haven't watched the show we can, we'll explain to you what happened and we'll explain to you why what happened was good or why we thought it was bad and then why we thought it was hilarious and you'll get a lot of that with us. And I should have mentioned at the beginning, the evolution of your show went from we tried it on its own feed and mm -hmm. we realized that that was a little harder to do just from scratch and so. You originally started on the Patreon exclusively, and mm -hmm. then when we created the free feed, uh, which is where you can find the Fight Game Media Network on Apple and Spotify and all that, we gave an abridged version of your show in that feed. And so in the free feed is your impact review, and then in the Patreon, which, you know, because people have to pay uh, five bucks a month for it, you get the whole thing, obviously with no commercials, but then you guys go into the news you go into other shows you go into mm -hmm. you know things that are happening in the business like mandy rose gets fired well you may not <laughs> hear that necessarily in the impact review but on the patreon you guys are definitely going to talk about it so it is it is not it is brace for impact but it is impact plus whatever the hell's going on in wrestling yeah yeah impact is the base right that's the basis of what we do we we will talk and, and review the show but um, it's no holds barred when we're going to get to Patreon. We'll talk about anything and everything. So if you if you like the conversations that we have on the free feed and or that you see on YouTube, um, it's like times ten when we get to the Patreon because we kind of we kind of let loose, right? There's not as many people listening on the Patreon, so we kind of let our guards down a little bit and kind of just go for it a lot of times. Uh, and thankfully, we haven't gotten so despicable that Garrett has decided to fire us yet, which could happen <laughs> at any moment. Um, we say we might say the wrong thing, so tune in for that. <laughs> okay, you guys also do a segment called Brace for Debate, uh, which is a good, you know, sort of back and forth. You don't necessarily always agree. There's going to be some things. And I don't know if you agree with this, but when you guys did your uh, 100th, 100th episode show, I wanted to jump on with you and do a Brace for Debate. This was a, this was a month and a half ago now. And this, this, Break this topic may not exactly be as topical today as uh, as it was, but I wanted to throw this at you because now I'm going to take a hard stance on this. I don't believe all of this, but if I came to you and said, Mike, Triple H and his booking is nothing other than taking Vince McMahon's blueprint without having the bad press, 
Vince McMahon's booking and Triple H's booking is the same. We just think of it as differently because Triple H isn't in trouble and Triple H isn't firing <laughs> people and yelling at people. And this is essentially the same thing that Vince would do. Would you agree or disagree with that? I I would partially agree, right? I don't completely agree um, because I think that Triple H learned from Vince McMahon. So a lot of the stuff he does is stuff that Vince would do, like that the guys that are on top are absolutely the guys that uh, Vince would be putting on top. However, comma, he does do things a lot differently. Uh, he put war games, right? Because Vince did not want anything to do with war games. He put that, um, he replaced a Vince creation in Survivor Series and essentially placed it with a Dusty creation in war games. That's not something that Vince would do. Um, Triple H is also not ripping up the script five minutes before the show and everybody's running around with their hair on fire all the time. That stuff's not happening. Uh, Vince McMahon never, ever in a million years would Vince McMahon have ever booked Johnny Gargano to look like a decent competitor on Raw. He would have been on, you know, main event or he would have been doing the things that Ricochet had been doing and Cedric Alexander had been doing for a long time. You know, a guy like Johnny Gargano is going to be able to come on the show and he's actually going to be treated with a little bit of dignity and maybe and seen kind of like a a, a a decent a decent level talent. He's so kind of a um, dick though as a baby face. That that's it's kind he, of weird how he comes across that way. Well I you know I think that you know he had a good run as a baby face on NXT but after a while that got old and then where Johnny really got interesting is when he turned heel. And that's when really that character started to come about. I think he's probably turning heel. I think it's inevitable. Yeah he's a bit of a dick right now. I think that's a slow burn heel turn. Where I think ultimately that's what we get in 2023 with Johnny Gargano, and in my opinion, that's the best version. Because I like little slap the leg uh, Johnny same face as Jim Cornette would call him, like uh, <laughs> kicking kicking out of everything, and you know 500 super kicks a match, and and being super melodramatic, like you know with some of the Tommaso Ciampa matches, how uh, you know the first one was pretty good, and then after yeah. that they just kind of they 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 turn into to gone with the wind after a while, you know, where it got to be way too much. So, uh, you know, that, that stuff was good and all, but I, I preferred, uh, Johnny Gargano as, uh, as a, a mid card funny heel. I don't think he's ever going to be your main event guy, but that is just one example. Another example is he just brought back Jonah, right? Bronson yeah. Reed, who, uh, who we actually got to cover on impact. He was, he was in impact uh, starting in January and he did a great job for that company. Um, and they had him for like six months and then he was on his way. Um, a guy like that, I don't think Vince was ever really going to get behind. And so, so while yes, there is some Vince to Triple H, I do think that he has broadened his horizons a little bit more, and he's willing to do more outside the box stuff that Vince would be willing to do as of now. Cool. No, I, I like that. Okay, let's let's talk about some impact stuff. Yeah. Um, when you look at 2022, uh, we only have another 11 days left as, as of this recording. What would you consider to be Impact's best moment of the year? Like when you think back of the good that happened on Impact Television or, or with the company, uh, and, and and this doesn't have to, we don't have to kiss up to Lance Storm and say hiring Lance Storm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what would you what would you consider to be the top moment? Uh, for me, the top moment was Josh Alexander beating Moose at Rebellion for the Impact World Heavyweight Title. Um, because that was something that they had built up over a six month period of time. And they did, they did it doing so in a way that where they really pissed off a lot of people, you know, at bound for glory last year, um, Josh won the title from Christian cage, made him tap out in the middle of the ring. And then immediately after Moose cashed in his briefcase and we were all pissed. And I was like, what a, what a nightmare, what a booking mistake. They left everybody on a sour note. I paid $40 for this, but what they were doing was telling this, this slow burn, a long story, a long-term story that that eventually got paid off in April, and actually, like two months before that, Josh's contract expired, um, and his visa uh, expired at the same time. So everybody thought that he had actually left the company, and there were reports suggesting that he might actually be gone. And then, of course, he ends up uh, showing back up on Impact Television out of nowhere, resigned a three-year deal. He got to Rebellion, and he beat Moose, and he beat Moose in a hell of a match. Um, so that would be that would be my my absolutely my my top moment. There's been some other cool moments. Um, AJ Styles did a video uh, for at Slammiversary earlier this year. That was really cool to see him. America's Most Wanted reunited after being apart for well over a decade. We got to see them have a match. 
Uh, the Briscoes showed up and had a tag team title run. The Kingdom showed up, had a tag team title run. We got to see uh, Frankie Kazarian have a, a run and go for the title there. Um, uh, lots of cool interaction with New Japan. Uh, we got to see Ishii go for the the world heavyweight title. Uh, Jay White was in the company. Tama Tonga and uh, Tonga Loa, they were in the company for a little bit. So a lot of uh, a lot of people from uh, New Japan and, and AEW made their way in and out of the promotion. But uh, hands down, it's uh, Josh defeating uh, Moose at uh, Rebellion this year. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with kissing up to Lance. Like I, oh, I just make, yeah. I, I just make sure that you know I, I want to do anything and everything to make sure he doesn't yell at Andrew and I when we do our live pal because he comes <laughs> on right a, after us. And you know if we're not out of there like seconds before we get the little little DM talking about hey <laughs> curtain jerkers main events about to come on. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's look at the other side of things. What was like a, a really bad moment or? Because kind of the worst moment, I think, can can mean a couple of different things. But I guess twofold. What did you think was kind of like the worst moment? But also, what did you think was kind of a bad moment, but kind of memorable, kind of funny, kind of goofy? They may be the same thing. I I, I don't yeah. know. Um. So the the worst moment for me was, um, and this was really indicative of where we're going to see Impact go in 2023. Was when um, it's not when Bully Ray returned to the company because I don't I didn't ever have a problem with Bully Ray returning to the company. Um, he was a he was a big star in TNA back in the day. He yes. was their top guy for a while, um, and they need guys that can bring a little bit of name name recognition. The worst moment for me was when he beat Steve Macklin at Bound for Glory, clean in the middle, and got the Call Your Shot trophy. Uh, that's Impact's version of the Money in the Bank um, briefcase. They get a trophy. Um, he beat Steve Macklin for that, and it really what it told me is that man, you know. AEW and WWE are in this war and they're signing up everybody, not only from the indies, but they're take they're poaching impact quite a bit. You yeah. know, since I would say since July, since Slammiversary, they've lost, you know, they've lost Morrissey, Mia Yim, the Good Brothers, OGK, Maria Canellis, uh, Vincent, and the uh, Chelsea Green. Uh, there's rumors that Matt Cardona is heading out. They just lost Eric Young. So, you know, Joe Doring left for, for a different reason, but Joe Doring left. So um, they've lose, they've lost star after star after star, and there's nobody to backfill that star power. So they had to reach out and pull in a, a guy like Bully Ray, um, and who, to his credit, is probably in the best shape I've ever seen him in. Um, but still, he's kind of a he's kind of a guy that's in his you know in his fifties, an old ECW guy, and he's still pulling the same heelish bullshit that he used to pull back in TNA. You know, a lot of it's really cheap stuff, and uh, and now he's getting ready to main event a pay per view in uh, 2023. So it's kind of it shows you just where Impact is in the landscape uh, when it comes to not only talent acquisition but talent retention. Mm -hmm. um, they, they haven't really been able to do that because they can't compete with the money. The WWE and AEW and even New Japan to an extent are offering right now. So that was that was my worst moment. And so the silliest moment that um, was very stupid that I can actually get a chuckle out of that that uh, JD cannot get a chuckle out of was when, <laughs> um, was when uh, Diener murdered Eric Young. Oh, yes. uh, this happened just a few weeks ago. Yes. Um, it was hokey. It was corny. It was very stupid. It was poorly acted. Greatly produced, by the way. Their production team is actually very good. Um. And, you know, Diener, uh, to, in a passing of the torch moment, Eric Young looked at Diener and said, just do it. And then Diener grabbed a shank and just stabbed him in a jail cell. And I have no idea why they were in prison. They just happened to be in prison. Um, and uh, basically murdered him and sent him uh, to WWE, where he's going to be working from now on. Um, I I don't... I the overall effectiveness of the skit, I don't think it's going to bring in new viewers. It's not going to bring in new eyeballs. I'm sure as I'm not going to sell any tickets. However, I do think it's funny that when someone leaves the company, instead of a loser leaves town match or firing them, you just kill them. I, I don't know why, like when Al, they did this to Ali a, a few years ago when she signed with AEW, it's like, oh, well, we could, we could, we could write her off. We could injure her. We can have her get feast or fired, or we can send her to hell and Sue Young can stab <laughs> her in the throat and she will die. And that's exactly what happened. And I thought that was pretty fun. I know Court wants to bring back Lucha Underground, but I don't know. Maybe Impact should bring back Lucha, <laughs> Lucha Underground. Hey, Impact's been doing that Lucha Underground stuff even before MLW restarted. Um, so because they they started it with uh, with the the uh, what what the what the Hardys were doing the uh, that that whole thing. They they started yeah, yeah. that back in the day where they're doing kind of like some sci-fi type of magical stuff, and then they brought in Decay, and they've kind of continued. And every once in a while. They, they bring some of that element back and it doesn't always work and it's usually pretty bad, but sometimes when they kill somebody, it makes me laugh. All right. You mentioned 2023 
outlook and you know talent the the roster you know may not be as as good as it was and you're right WWE and and AEW are scooping up all the talent even if they don't know what the hell they're going to do with them it's just like a you know we need to keep the people on our side because if they're not on our side then they may go on the other side uh do, do you think that they start to turn and give people who maybe they wouldn't give a shot to like, is this going to be, you know, cause the Indies have already been picked apart. And yeah. so, you know, maybe we see impact grab some action and you know, before they're ready to be action and just because they, they, you know, maybe they could sort of create some stars there. Sometimes when that is the case, you're sort of forced to do it. But uh, what, do, what do you think is going to happen there in, in in 2023 when it comes to the roster. Well, I think that they're going to be forced to do stuff like that because everybody that got fired during the pandemic that impact brought in has essentially gone back You take a look, you know, obviously you know Jonah, the good brothers, uh, Chelsea green, and the list goes on and on Eric young um, most recently um, they're all starting to go back and they're not going to be able to turn down that uh, WWE money. Um, uh, there are rumors. Like I said, Cardona has been oh, wait, rumored. Wait, wait, for- wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Jonah beat Okada. Oh my gosh. Yes. How, <laughs> how dare you, Jonah? How dare you go make all of that money when we let you beat Okada? What a, what a dumb, dumb ghetto is for letting <laughs> Jonah beat Okada without having that guy under contract. That's not Jonah's fault. If somebody comes to Jonah's like, Hey brother, do you want to beat Okada in Japan? Oh yeah, sure. Will you sign this contract? No, I will not do that. I might, I might get the call from Papa H and that's exactly what happened. So Good for Jonah. He's making that cheddar. And and that's ultimately what the business is about, right? Make the most money while you can before you're before you're not able to do it anymore. Your window is very small of maximizing your money in this business and you got to do it. And so and sometimes that means you're probably not going to get booked very well, but you're going to go up to WWE and make all the money you can. Or like OGK uh, or the, the kingdom, you know, they went they they, they got that contract, the K-H-A-N tracked contract uh, with uh, with AEW slash Ring of Honor. And they've had two matches, I think, since they've signed there back in October, right? So you you might be sacrificing some of your reps and some of your TV time, but you know, once you get you got to get that paycheck in in the in the mailbox every week. That stuff's important, especially when you got a family, and you got bills. If you're an adult, you need to go make the most money that you can. But back to what you were saying, you know, what what's going to be the strategy going forward? I think you're absolutely right. They got to look for those uh, action Andretti's. I Impact released a a video today on their YouTube Insiders, right? And they have these uh, promotional deals, with all these independent promotions. Um, Sam McCallahan owns a promotion. I think they're out of Ohio. It's called the Pro Wrestling Revolver. Mm-hmm. And they had a match with Steve Macklin, which is one of their guys, uh, versus Mance Warner versus uh, Crash. I think Crash Jackson is his name. And a guy called Manders, um, a cowboy guy. He does a cowboy gimmick. And they had a four-way um, hardcore match. And they, they put that on their YouTube. And I was like, and I was looking at three guys that are unsigned that have a ton of charisma that can work in the ring a little bit. Those are the types of guys that they need to start looking at. They need to look at more Ace Austin or Ace Austin and Chris Bay versus waiting on the scrap heap for whenever, you know, WWE needs to get their, their budget under control and they're cutting more guys. Cause right now they're, they're not doing that. So um, I, I can see them going after guys like that. Um, John Morrison is still available. He was the world champion here. His wife works for the company right now. Um, I, that, that is somebody they could probably look at. I know Leo rush is out there. Um, EC three has ruined his brand completely. I don't think that they're actually even interested in him. (laughs) They did bring him in uh, at the beginning of, uh, uh, whenever he got released back in 2020, he did exactly one match. It was completely terrible and they have not even sniffed at him again. But, um, so there are some like bigger name talents out there that they could go for. But I think, it, you know, there's more value. You're going to get more return on your investment by grooming a, a younger star that doesn't have the notoriety because guess what? Whenever they did have all these guys from ring of honor and they brought in Jay white and they brought in, you know, Frankie Kazarian, they weren't exactly, you know, hitting home runs at the box office. They weren't exactly hitting home runs in the ratings. So, you know, I think it, you could try it out with some of these fresher guys, build them up a little bit and then get them to, to where, you know, you could probably make a little bit more money because that overhead is going to be low, especially if you're not going to, inc- the ticket sales aren't going to increase anyway. Right. So you weren't knocking them dead no matter what. So you bring in guys that are a little bit cheaper and that, that money is going to stay the same. Your profits are going to go up. It's just business. And they, and I think that's what they got to do. And the frustrating thing I would imagine is you build up somebody and you actually create mm-hmm. somebody 
and you're essentially setting them up to go somewhere somewhere else at some yeah. point because of where the money yeah. is, like you said. So that's got to be like a little the, frustrating with the with the business plan. It's like being the Oakland A's, right? <laughs> like you're you're gonna you're gonna groom these talent, and then when their contracts come due, you know you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the Giants and the Yankees and the Dodgers and the Cubs and the Red Sox all coming for them. But that's, at least you can trade those guys and and, and yeah. get some some picks, which unfortunately for Impact, uh, you know that they 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 they, they could make some deals with with what? companies like like they've done right. in, in the past with AEW and New Japan. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, you know, outside of that, uh, it, it seems like it's, it's going to be, you know, really, really having an eye for, for some of that, that indie talent. Uh, what would you say now? I think not, not you reminded me when, when you and, uh, when you and JD came on the whole AEW partnership, mm -hmm. uh, when you look back at that, Kenny Omega on the television, Christian on the television, what i mean they got some they definitely got an increase in in, in eyeballs w w uh, at least in the beginning mm -hmm. but you know how would you grade that that time frame i mean was it was it worth it was it not really that big of a deal at the end of the day you know we i guess you got to see tony khan do heel <laughs> promos uh yeah. like like how how would you how would you look back and, and grade that time frame I, I, I don't, I, you know, probably like a C because I felt like there was potential to be more, you know, I honestly thought that AEW, um, dropped the ball on that one. And because you, you had, you had impact and AEW has all these young stars that they could have been sending to impact to get those extra reps. And they could have been working for like, kind of like what WWE used to do with ECW back in the day, where they would send Al Snow and just incredible on these guys and say, oh, you know what? Look, we, we don't have anything for you right now. We got you under contract. We're going to send you over here. Why don't you go get a character? Why don't you go get some more reps? And why don't you go workshop that around? And when you get it over, we'll bring you back. And I thought that was something that AEW could have done, but it, they always treated AEW or AEW kind of always treated impact. Like they were beneath them, mm. right? Like they didn't really want to promote the impact show on the AEW show. They would talk when the impact stars would come on, they would briefly mention that, that they're from impact, but they wouldn't really tell you how to, how to find them. And, and, you know, everybody's like, well, why would Tony Khan do that? Well, it's because you're, you're a partner, you're working with these guys, you know, it's like, it doesn't hurt you to do stuff like that. Um, and uh, on the other hand, a uh, impact kind of went above and beyond, I thought to kind of promote the other brand. And, and I know that we're talking levels like impact in, domestically anyway, impact has about a 10th of the viewership of, of that, of dynamite, but I still thought that they dropped the ball. I thought that, um, AEW could have, you know, I thought, you know, private party could have spent a lot more time in impact, but they came, they went to one taping and they, they got a victory and then they never came back. Um, and, you know, I thought they could have done some more stuff like that. Uh, you know, the Kenny Omega stuff kind of went with a whimper because he ended up losing the title on, on AEW TV versus impact TV. And he lost it to an AEW star, but we did get to get Christian back in impact. And I thought that was kind of cool. So it's like, Hey, we didn't get the Josh Alexander, Kenny Omega match that, that had been getting teased on television. Um, but we did get Christian back on impact. And I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool. But by the time that that happened, you know, everybody was so underwhelmed with the AEW involvement and impact that we were kind of just over it, I would say. Um, and so it, it, it lost its novelty. And then once Christian, once Christian Cage left, it was no, no real big deal. And look, and I'm a big Frankie Kazarian fan, but you know, they, they brought him in quite a bit this year and it has, a, it didn't really do anything for box office or for ratings or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I felt like it was cool to see Omega. It was cool to get, you know, they got the, they got the initial ratings bump, which didn't last that long. They got the pay-per-view bump and that was cool. But by the time impact brought fans back, they had lost Omega and, um, they didn't really get the full benefits of having a guy like that on your show. It just kind of went with a whimper. All right. So let's, uh, let's bring this back, uh, to the overall, wrestling scene here when you look back on 2023 what is your favorite non-impact moment in pro wrestling oh, 
My favorite non-impact moment would be Steve Austin coming back at WrestleMania to wrestle Kevin Owens. I just, I, I grew up a big Steve Austin fan. My first event ever that I ever went to was the Raw after Royal Rumble in 1998, and had the in Fresno, California, and had the big confrontation between Mike Tyson and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I am a Steve Austin guy. I love him. Um, so seeing him come back at uh, at WrestleMania to take on Kevin Owens, then of course the Cody Rhodes moment I thought was really cool. Um, and in AEW. For me, I, even though it's, you know, Ring of Honor or WWECW is kind of what we call it, um, the double dog collar match, I love that one because FTR and the Briscoes are my two favorite tag teams, so getting to see them do that, I, I, I really enjoyed. All right, so before we get out of here, um, I just wanted to, to mention again, uh, patreon.com front slash fight game media to hear the full experience with uh, with Mike and JD. And if you want, if you want to go subscribe to the free network which any apple spotify all that stuff just search for fight game media in your in your uh wherever you listen to, to podcasts and you can also hear uh the partial version the impact review of brace for impact uh but yeah man thanks for doing this i i wanted to make sure that we showed impact some love because like i said not that many people talk about i'm sure lance talks about it on a little bit on on his stuff because he does <laughs> he, work there. you know he he does, but he can't. And and uh, I don't know if Lance is ever going to hear this. I understand why you don't talk about Impact that much on your show because he works there. He's probably yeah. he only talks about you know he can't. He's not really going to criticize his own podcast. Sure. So I think everybody thinking that he should do that or thinking he's a hypocrite for not doing that. You guys are full of it. He can't do that. <laughs> that would be inappropriate. That'd be like me coming onto your show and talking shit about my boss. You know, yeah. um, here 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 in a while. I can't. You can't do stuff like that. So let everybody leave Lance alone. So <laughs> you just take a lot of stuff for because man, AEW fans are pretty sensitive. Uh, and I thought Impact fans were very sensitive, and they are, man. They they have taken me to task for some of my critiques. But boy, oh boy, man, you you say anything negative about AEW, they try to come at you like you like like you're if you attack their their favorite wrestling promotion, it's like attacking their family member, and it is mind bogglingly stupid. Like uh, in a, a criticism of a wrestling promotion is not a critique of you, dummies. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about this audience because John and I are critical about Dynamite. And yeah. so I think the people who like our reviews are a little bit open minded about the pluses and and the negatives uh, of the show. So you don't have to worry about this audience being sensitive <laughs> about AEW critiques. 